Oh, good morning, y'all. How you doing? I almost left my glasses on. I've been messing around with this light. You know, you already know. Uh, I, I've been trying to get my light together here. I think I'm going to have to get a bigger light. How y'all doing this morning? All right. I'm look here. I'm here. I'm here this morning. Praise God. God is good. I'm telling you, it is wonderful to be here this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a wonderful place to be. I'm telling you. Look here, y'all. Welcome to Real Talk Inspiration. I am Valerie Oliver founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now, we are not your traditional Baptist church, and I am not your traditional pastor. No, I am not. Never have been. Amen. I have tried. I am not. And so, beloved, I want to welcome you all here this morning know that we are not concerned about your gender expressions your gender affections where you're from uh who you love who you marry uh what your last name is what your title is you know and all of this stuff that god really you know may support you in your title or whatever or send you you know to do a certain service you know great but the main thing God is concerned about is your spiritual growth and your heart. Do you have a good heart? Have you got good religion? God is concerned about your spiritual growth. Amen. And so, beloved, uh, this morning we want to welcome you once again to our weekly Real Talk Inspiration. Y'all, uh... Once again, I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church. I wanted people to know that there is a Baptist church. That's why I say Baptist. It's First Liberty Church for short. But uh, our legal name is Baptist Church because I wanted people to know there is a Baptist church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that is all-inclusive, that does not, um, you know, discriminate, does not, uh, you know, uh, uh, criticize and, and, and hold judgment or pass judgment against uh, people who are not like them or people who are not like us. You know, like the LGBTQ plus community. Look, you're welcome here. You are welcomed and affirmed, accepted as who you are. Be yourself here. Amen. Bring you and your wife, you and your husband, bring your children. Y'all come on. Listen, Jesus loves us all and is not trying to change us. We don't need to pray the demon away or pray the gay away. Just come on and, and, and love the Lord. That's all. You know, if God wanted to change us, God could have changed us before we were in our mother's womb. I said something right there. If God wanted to change us, God would have changed us before we were in our mother's womb. God knew who we were going to be. God knew who we would be, who we would be, who we would love, who we would be attracted to. He knew everything about us. The Lord told Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. So he knew everything about Jeremiah. He knew all of Jeremiah's gifts, abilities, and who he would be, his personality, who he would love, who what you know, who would be his family, or if he had a family or would not have a family. God knew everything and knows everything. Why would God uh, uh, let that be a part of who we are and then turn around and condemn us? That don't make sense. I know that ain't good English. I know that. That's how I preach and teach. You know, I don't use good English all the time when I'm preaching and teaching. <laughs> uh, it just sounds better to me. But, but beloved, uh, uh, God wouldn't turn around and condemn us after having made us the way we are and allowed us to be the way we are. If he knew there was something there that, 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 that he or she would not like, that the divine spirit would not like, our creator would not like, would have removed it. 
wouldn't have let it be there, beloved. Uh -huh. That's right. Our orientation, our sexuality, our sexual orientation is given at birth. Uh, it is not a choice. Uh, we are born who we are. So don't listen to the naysayers, you know, because they really don't know. They don't study enough to know what they're talking about. You know, no, 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 no offense intended, uh, but, you know, they don't really study enough to even know, you know, what, what they're talking about. So don't listen. They're just repeating things that they have heard down through the generations. That's all. They don't really study. Uh, so, beloved, um, we're not concerned about all that. I just got to get that out of the way. Sometimes I like to remind you, amen, okay, that, that, that you know, we are here. Now, Now, because we are Baptists, does not mean you have to have a Baptist background to come and join us. Not at all. Come and join us. Pentecost. Look, I'm, I'm Baptist. You, I might run and jump up and down and go to dancing. You never know. You know, when the Spirit is there and, and, and the Holy Spirit has taken control, you know, of the service, listen here, uh, uh, you don't contain, <laughs> contain yourself. Just be who you are. Worship however you worship. You know, Pentecostal, Methodist, Catholic, I don't care what your background is. You are welcome at First Liberty Church. You are welcome here, you know, does it, even if you are of a different faith, you know, even if you're not Christian or, you know, you, you have a, a different uh, faith background, come on, you are welcome. Jesus is Lord here at First Liberty. Jesus is Lord, but you are welcome here in this place, no matter your denomination or you know, where you're from or what you believe, you know, you are welcome here. You don't have to be Baptist to come here. I have a Baptist background, you know, and so uh, that, that, beloved, is, you know, all you need to be concerned about is Jesus, who Jesus is. Amen. Well, I'm going to go on this morning. <laughs> um, Y'all, we are going to pray. You know, we are to always pray. The Lord said, pray without ceasing. Pray continuously, the NIV puts it. Pray continuously. Don't ever stop praying. Pray in the daytime. Pray at nighttime. Pray in noon. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. You know, you can be in the store praying. You don't have to always be on your knees and have your eyes closed. Just pray. Just talk to the Lord in your heart. The Lord will hear that. The Lord hears our hearts. And so, beloved, always pray. So if there is anything, anything weighing heavily on your heart this morning, if there is anything that concerns you, anything that is causing you grief, not necessarily the loss of a loved one, but it could be the loss of a job or the loss of a, a, a friendship, uh, you know, anything that is disturbing you or bothering you this morning, give it to the Lord. God said, bring all of your burdens, cast them all upon me. I care for you. It's one thing to take your burdens to somebody who cares about you. That's wonderful. But sometimes there's only so much they can do. God is not only willing, but God is able to do it. God is able to fix it. All powerful, all knowing, omnipresent. Amen. Y'all let us pray, okay? And then we're going to come on back and get into the word. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this morning. You are the one and only true and living God. And besides you, there is none other. We have come thanking you for the many, many, many blessings you have so graciously bestowed upon us. Lord, we want to thank you for being good to us, putting food on our tables and clothes on our backs and shoes on our feet. We want to thank you for being better than to us than we've been to ourselves. We want to thank you for blessing us in ways that we are not even aware of. Things you have done for us that we don't even know about. Seen and unseen dangers you have protected us from. 
Oh, we thank you, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, we still wouldn't be able to thank you enough for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We realize who you are. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything therein. Oh, Lord, we know that you are the one and only living, true God. And we give you praise this morning. We just thank you because you are so wonderful. We love you this morning from the very bottom of our hearts. We appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do. We love you. There are no words to describe you. There are no words to describe how we adore you. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you for wanting to be a part of our lives. Thank you for wanting to be in our lives and wanting us to be in you and involved in your work here in this earth. We thank you, Lord, for that. You don't have to be even bothered with us. You don't have to even consider involving us in your work. You don't need us, but you want us. You want us to be involved in your work. You want a relationship with us. And Lord, it is my hope that we would all want a relationship with you. Not out of any obligation or feeling the need to do so or else. No, we want to be with you. We want to love you. We thank you, Lord, that you are always there with open arms. You are always with us. You always hear our prayers, no matter when we pray. In the evening, in the morning, at noonday. If we pray at three o'clock in the morning, you hear us. And we thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask your forgiveness for those things that we may have said or done that are not pleasing in your sight. We may have said or done something that harmed someone in some way. Lord, we are sorry. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us so, Lord, that we'll be the bright lights, not darkness, but bright lights that this world needs to see. People need to see you, not us. So we pray, Lord, that when people see us, they see you. When they hear us, they hear you. The world needs you, Lord. And so we thank you for giving us the privilege to serve you here by serving one another in this earth. To love you by loving one another. We give you thanks this morning, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for your grace. Your grace is sufficient for us. No matter what we have to go through in this earth, you give us the strength to go through it. You give us the ability and the power to make it through. Oh, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you so much. What would we do without you? What would we do? Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Where would I be? And so, Lord, we thank you. Now we want to lift up those burdens that are weighing heavily on the shoulders of some who may be listening right now and some who may be listening later on or at a later time. Whatever their burdens, whatever their concerns, sorrows, grief, uh, unfortunate situations, struggles, Lord, you know all about it. We lift it all up to you, Lord. We give it to you. We know that you can handle it. You know what to do about it, Lord. You have already planned it out. You know the end from the beginning. We are only seeing bits and pieces of 
the bigger picture, Lord, and we don't get it all the time. We don't understand it all the time, but you got a bigger picture. You got a plan for us, Lord, and you already know what your plan is and how the end is going to be. We don't need to worry about it. Only pray about it. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid. You told us not to be afraid because you are with us. You told us, be not dismayed, for you are our God. And you said you would fight our battles for us. Thank you that the battle is not ours. The battle is yours. Oh, we give you thanks this morning, Lord, for fighting our battles for us. We ask that you would come against those who come against us. We ask that you would fight against those who fight against us and fight with those who fight with us. We ask that you would remove every unclean and a, a, a wicked spirit that may come into our presence, Lord. We ask that you would destroy every power that isn't your power. We ask that you would remove it from us, that you would hinder every a uh, power that tries to come against us, any power of darkness, any principality, any demonic forces that try to come against us, Lord, we ask that you come against them. Hinder those who try to hinder us. Move them out of our way so that we may proceed and move forward in your service. Lord, we ask that you would render everything and everybody powerless who tries to stop your plan for our lives and give us the power to continue to move on and to move forward. Oh, we thank you this morning. We don't have to worry about anything. Lift up those who are sick in their bodies this morning touch and heal lord you are still in the healing business you are still the chief physician in the hospital the doctor in the sick room lord we ask that you would touch heal lord in the name of jesus not only are you the doctor in the sick room but you are the lawyer in the courtroom if anybody is in trouble this morning, stand on their behalf. Help them, Lord. Help them make it through this situation, and it won't always be this way. I hear you saying trouble don't last always. If anybody is in any trouble this morning, Lord, trouble don't last always. We thank you for that, Lord, and we know that you are able to keep us to keep us and to, to see that, that we make it through this old barren land. Lord, we ask that you would help us with anything, any, any problem, any situation, whatever it might be. Finances, family, friendships, relationships, whatever, Lord, fix it, Jesus. Continue to help those who are uh, civilians over there in Ukraine who are, are running, literally running for their lives. Lord, help. Help us here at home. We need you here, Lord. Look over all of these politicians and leaders, Lord, who are uh, 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 making decisions that affect all of us. Let them know, Lord, that their own personal beliefs and their own personal concerns should not be involved in their decisions for the people. For it is we the people who they are serving, not themselves. And so, Lord, we ask that you would guide and lead them we know that you can turn a king's heart around, a leader's heart. 
anybody who is making decisions that affects all of us, you can touch and turn their heart around. So, Lord, we ask that you would look and see. Like they would say in the in the, in the, the elders, I would hear say, look and have mercy. Woo, help us, Lord. We need you this morning. And I want to lift up the bereaved before we close this prayer. Those who have lost loved ones, Lord, we want to lift them up. We ask your blessings upon their, them and their families. Give them peace that passes all understanding. Give them strength in this very trying time. Give them comfort as only you can. We need you, Lord, and we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. And Lord, we thank you in advance. Now as we approach your word, let us approach it with open hearts, spiritual ears. Give us the ability to hear from heaven, to hear from you, Lord, so that we can apply your word to our lives. We will always give you the glory for it. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, know that God is not only a prayer hearing God, but God is also a prayer answering God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, God is a prayer answering God. Let me see here. Uh, Y'all, listen, we're going to go on into the lesson. I just want to acknowledge uh, those of you. Basma, my sister, sister. Y'all, good morning. Good for you to be here. I'm so happy you're here. Chuck, my brother, good to see you this morning. God bless you, Vanetta. God bless you. You are welcome here. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh-huh. It's good to be here. It's happy time. <laughs> I'm happy to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen here. Uh, many of us uh, have experienced church hurt. You see, uh, many of us, beloved, uh, for whatever reason, at some time or another uh, in our lives, we have experienced church hurt. And uh, sometimes, beloved, uh, you know, we, we, we hear people say, uh, you ain't never been hurt until you've been hurt in the church. <laughs> you know, uh, and there is a lot of truth to that, beloved, and I believe that's true because, uh, you know, that is a place where you expect uh, to experience nothing but love, you know, and where you, you, you expect to experience uh, nothing but acceptance, you see, but that is not true for, for many of us. And so, uh, beloved, uh, many uh, uh, have uh, received church hurt or have experienced hurt in the church, especially the LGBTQ plus community. You know, yes, there are others. There are those who are not in the LGBTQ plus community who have experienced church hurt, you see. And so what do you do after church hurt? You know, after you've been hurt in the church, what do you do? You know, Jesus experienced church hurt. You do know that, right? You realize that Jesus uh, has experienced church hurt. No one has experienced church hurt the way Jesus has. It was the church who turned Jesus over to be crucified. It was the religious leaders, the Pharisees. They turned him over, the Sadducees. They gathered together. The Sadducees and Pharisees didn't even care for each other that much. But they came together to go against Jesus. Isn't that something? How people who don't even like each other will come together to come against you? 
even in the church, beloved, and they would get together the Sanhedrin council, you see, and they would get together and they would plot, they would scheme against Jesus, you know, uh, and then, beloved, ultimately, they turned him over to be killed. You see, nobody have, has experienced church hurt like Jesus. Physical church hurt and emotional church hurt. See, you know, he would get up and read scripture. And and, and, and I'm reminded of, of the time and when he read from Isaiah. Uh, we call it the 61st chapter. There were no chapters back then. There were scrolls. And he read, he found the place in, in Isaiah where it talked about uh, how he had been sent you know, uh, and anointed to set the, set the captives free, to preach the good news. He had been sent, and he told them, he said, at church one day, you know, back, back then, it was a Saturday, a Sabbath, you know, back then, at, at church, he, he told them, now today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Talking about himself. They tried to kill him when he said that. You see, and, and so, beloved, uh, nobody has experienced church hurt like Jesus experienced church hurt. Well, what did Jesus do? How did Jesus handle church hurt? Mm, when the Lord sent me to help somebody this morning, you see, if you ever been hurt in the church, LGBTQ plus community or not, if you've ever been hurt in the church, this message is for you. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, and we're going to begin with verse 3. It's verses 3 through 10, and I'm going to just kind of, uh, you know, move through them swiftly until I get to the point where I want to be. I'm not going to even hold you long this morning, beloved. I just want to show you uh, what Jesus did, uh, and it doesn't look like it, you'll see it here uh, uh, in this text, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and I'm reading the NIV, beginning with verse 3. Now, this is after Jesus uh, uh, rose from the dead, and Paul is uh, talking to the church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the church, the believers, uh -huh, those who follow Christ uh, at the church of Corinth. Jesus had, had, had gone on back to heaven now. You see, and, and so Paul is in, encouraging them, you see, and, and some of them were attacking his apostleship. Some of them questioned his apostleship. How you get to become an apostle, you know? How you get, you're not a member of the original 12, you know? When did you meet Jesus? Apostles were sent by Jesus himself. You see, and they're, you know, challenging Paul. When did you see Jesus? You didn't come on the scene until after Jesus left here. You remember when, when Paul was on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus. But Jesus talked to Paul from heaven. You remember, they heard the voice, but they didn't see anybody. All they could see was the bright light. It was so bright and blinded Paul. Uh huh. And, and so uh, Paul met Jesus. He really did meet Jesus. And that was a personal encounter. He met Jesus one on one. And from that day forth, Jesus sent Paul to the Gentiles to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. You know, everybody who wasn't uh, 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 supposed to be among the Jews. He said, Paul, to them, mm -hmm. that would have been me and you, beloved. Uh -huh. So Paul uh, had a role to play, you know, in the gospel, in, in preaching the gospel. And so, uh, you know, P Paul had to uh, uh, defend his apostleship. He went around killing Christians, you know, a uh, uh, serial killer, you know, if you ask me, going around killing folk, and, and, and now he's an apostle. And a lot of people didn't trust him and were afraid of him, you know, you what, what you mean? You know, you're an apostle, you know, you have, you're not a member of the original 12. And so Paul here in verse 3 says, for what I received, talking about the word from the Lord, the word of God. Uh, uh, what I received, I pass on to you. He's defending his apostleship now. You know, you know, that's something how, you know, when God calls us, you know, to do certain things, we have to defend ourselves. 
you know, we, we have to, you know, prove to people some, some kind of way that God really did call us. You know, uh, you in the LGBTQ plus community, God ain't called you to preach. You, you, you're a woman, God didn't call you to pastor no church. You know, you, you got to defend yourself and stand up for yourself, beloved. Here Paul is standing up for himself. Jesus stood up for himself. He didn't let people just say anything about him and get away with it. You see, uh, uh, that, was, that was back in that day, uh, uh, it was custom to defend yourself socially. You know, it was an honor society, so to speak. You didn't just let people say anything about you. You spoke up. You had to correct people and get it right, you see. And so uh, uh, Paul said, listen here, uh, for what I have received from the Lord, uh, uh, in other words, I pass on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sin. This is the most important uh, uh, part of the gospel, that Christ died for us. And so this is of utmost importance, Paul is saying, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Paul is putting the scriptures first. He's, you know, he, he's putting the scriptures first. He's not even talking about, you know, what, what, what these people are talking about or, 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 or anything else for that matter. He's putting all of the validity on the scriptures. He said, according to the scriptures, beloved, it's the word. It's the word of God that leads and guides us. It's the word of God that changes things. We say prayer changes things. Yeah, if you pray the word. You've got to pray line up with, with God's will, you know, even if it's not uh, in a specifically uh, word for word from the scriptures, it'll be a principle coming from the word, you see. Uh -huh. And if it lines up with, with the will of God or the word of God, beloved, you're going to see it happen. It's going to happen. You know God is going to hear you. And if God hears you, God is going to do it. And so, beloved, uh, uh, this is the gospel. And Paul puts the gospel first. He said, according to the scriptures. Beloved, you know, as uh, with a Baptist background as myself, uh, you know, uh, I stand on the word. You know, I, I, I left the church, but I didn't leave the word. I left the traditional church, so to speak. I didn't leave the word, you know. I stand on the word. I stand on the word. Somebody asked me a question just yesterday or the other day, and and uh, uh, I, I said, well, I don't see that no way in, 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 in the word, you know. I said, but, you know, uh, that's up to you. You pray about it, you know, and, and you see what the Lord would say about it, but uh, I can't speak on it because I have not seen it in the word. I would get criticized for that, you know, by some, but 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 some uh, are like me, stand on the word. If it ain't in there, don't worry about it. I believe everything that we can encounter in this life today, there is a principle for it in the word of God. I haven't seen anything that is not. I'm not talking about cell phones and refrigerators and all that kind of new stuff we have. All that, all that, there are, you know, there's guidance and there, there is a way that we can follow God when it comes to this, this stuff that's irrelevant, you know, uh, even trivial, you know, that don't matter. But, but the basic principles do not change, beloved. So let me go on here. And so uh, Paul puts the word uh, first and foremost. He said, according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. You see, and he was talking mainly about a creed. Now, just stick with me now. I'm, I'm, I'm going on. I'm going to get there. Uh, uh, he's talking about a creed or, or, or a, a summary of the an article of faith that they, they probably very well had, you know, back then, even back then, you know. Uh, and, and it may have been required prior to baptism or something of the sort. And so, so uh, according to the scriptures, he said, I, I pass it on to you. And then he goes, on in verse 40 says uh, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day beloved uh, 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 do you know uh, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is, is this is it right here 
that this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you when you talk about the death, the, the, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. That's the gospel right there. That's also Paul here is talking about the gospel. That he was buried. That means he died. You know, he died. And, and that he was raised on the third day according, there he is again, according to the scriptures. Uh, don't you know, beloved, the scriptures, if you don't believe uh, the scriptures, what else will you believe? You know, uh, you can't separate God from the scriptures. If you don't believe the scriptures, what else can you believe? What else can you stand on? How can you have faith if you don't believe the scriptures? So here Paul is again, according to the scriptures. The word of God is powerful. It's, it's active. The Lord watches over the word to see that it does what God sent it to do. The word of God performs things, and it will not return to God without first doing what God sent it to do. The word of God is powerful, beloved. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The living word of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. And so, and so, beloved, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Paul goes on, and uh, and, and now he's talking about uh, uh, Jesus appearing to others after uh, the, the resurrection. Remember now, uh, uh, if, if it was in this day and time uh, when Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, he would still be walking around right now today, not having gone back to heaven yet after the crucifixion and after the resurrection when we celebrated resurrection day uh on easter sunday passover you know uh, uh you know uh from that day forward even till now jesus will still be walking on the earth walking around you know showing himself to people and so what was he doing you know uh, I, I, i'm gonna get there just hold on and so uh, uh he appeared here uh paul says to cephas uh, Cephas is a name Jesus gave to Peter. Cephas means Peter. Uh, it means uh, rock or stone. You remember when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? You know, first he asked, well, who do people say that I am? And, 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 and the, the disciples answered, hey, well, some say you're a prophet. Some say, you, you know, you're Elijah. Some say, you you know, uh, who have come back in the spirit or something of that sort. Uh, some, but Jesus said, okay, well, who do you say I am? And Peter stood up and said, you are the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of God. You see, and, and, and Jesus said, uh, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, Peter. Mm -mm, that came from heaven. <laughs> that did that flesh and blood didn't tell you that. You know, that, that came from heaven. And so, uh, 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 and Jesus went on to say, upon this rock, I will build my church. Not upon Peter, but what Peter said. You are the Christ. The church is built upon Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, I will build my church on who you say I am. I am the Christ, the Son of God. And that is what the church is built on, even to this day, beloved, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Son of God. And so uh, way back when Jesus called Peter to come and be a disciple, to follow him, he gave him the name Peter, meaning Cephas. Cephas is uh, the Greek uh, name for uh, Peter. And so, but Peter also is 
uh, it comes from a Greek word named Simon or Simeon. And so you might see in some places Simon Peter. Bears my think you asked me uh, about that the other day. Simon is Peter. And that's what uh, his name really was. That's his birth name, Simon. Uh, uh, and so you would hear Simon Peter. And But Jesus changed his name uh, uh, to Peter, Cephas, rock, stone. You see, uh huh. And so, uh, uh Paul is is going is telling people how Jesus was going around appearing to people. And so, in verse five, he said, first he appeared, not first, but he appeared to Cephas, because first he appeared to Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's another lesson, though. And so, uh, and then he said he appeared to the twelve, the original twelve. You see, the, the original 12 disciples. Now, it could mean the 11 uh, without Judas still, uh, you know, being called the full 12. Uh, but it could have included the new uh, disciple, uh, Matthias. So it could have been 11 and it could have been 12. Either way, uh, it is called the, the 12. The twelve, the original twelve, is what is meant here. Saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, then he, after he appeared to Cephas, uh, he appeared uh, to the twelve. Now this is in Corinthians. Now this is where now Jesus had been gone back now by this time, but Jesus, uh, he's talking about how Jesus appeared. Then he goes on in verse six, and he said, after that, follow me now. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters. Who are the brothers and sisters? The brothers and sisters are followers of Christ, are, are, are disciples of Christ, or Christians. You see, at that same time, 500 at the same time? Well, it is believed that he was on some kind of mountain or another. You know, he often preached before the crucifixion from the mountain. You remember the uh, sermon on the mount. You get up on a mountain. They didn't have microphones or anything. You get up on a mountain and your voice would carry. The people sitting down below could hear, uh, uh, you know, the voice, the mountain would somehow uh, act as some kind of amplifier or something, and, and, and it's down the slope, you know, your voice could be heard loudly, you see. Uh, and so the people who were sitting below Jesus as he was on the mountain, uh, they could hear him loudly, loud and clear, with no microphone, you see. Uh -huh. And so you know how they used to have these theaters, amphitheaters, amphitheaters or something like that they used to call them they, they were always the audience was down below because they didn't have microphones and stuff like that but they knew how to make it work you see they understood how to make it work and, and their voices and the sound would carry throughout that theater and so the, the mountain uh acted the same way provided the same kind of uh a service uh for them and so this is believed to have been on a mountain in galilee because Jesus told him, I'm going back to Galilee after he had risen from the dead. Go tell my brothers and them, uh, I'm going to meet them over there in Galilee, you see. And so uh, at the same time, he appeared to 500. Why am I talking about who he appeared to today? You know, why am I talking about that? And, and then, well, what I'm going to tell you, hold on, see, because we're talking about church hurt. What has this got to do with church hurt? Just stay with me. Uh-huh, stay with me now. Be patient with me. And so, um, uh, but Paul goes on and he says, most of whom are still living of the 500. Some, you know, may have passed away because he says some have fallen asleep. Within that 40 day period, some people had fallen asleep, had gone on and left. You know, just within that 40 day period, man, how quickly uh, things can turn around, I'm telling you. And so, beloved, I'm telling you, never know, you know. Uh huh. Just always be ready. Always be ready. And so, in verse 7, uh, uh, then he goes on, Paul said, and then he appeared to James and then to all the uh, apostles other apostles, you know, that, 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 that perhaps had been added. Uh, and Paul, I'm sure, is including himself here. Uh -huh. So in verse 8, uh, and last of all, he appeared to me. 
as one of the apostles. See, remember, he's defending his apostleship. He appeared to me. Apostles were sent uh, to build churches. Remember, uh, there were churches everywhere in Ephesus, Galatia, Corinthia, uh, 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 Corinth, excuse me. Uh, there were churches all over the place. Paul went around planting churches. And these leaders of churches who helped him, that's, uh, that, that, that means he was an apostle. You know, and so uh, last of all, he appeared to me, Paul said, as to one abnormally born. Now, what does he mean abnormally born? Paul, uh, not one of the original 12, uh, so to speak, is given the analogy of one not normally born. How can you become an apostle when you weren't there in the beginning, when Jesus didn't call you first and you were not among the original 12? Paul didn't have long teachings from Christ like the other apostles did. Uh, he didn't sit with Jesus for three years and learn. And, 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 and you know, uh, if, in fact, what he was doing was killing Christians at that time. When Jesus was actually on the earth before the crucifixion, Paul was killing Christians. And so uh, he, he came in late, so to speak. And that's what he means by saying abnormally born. Uh, abnormally born into the apostleship is what he's saying. Uh, he came in late, you see. He came in late, but he came in ready because he had been suddenly made ready by Christ himself on the road to Damascus. Go and kill some more Christians. Go on and put them in jail, you see. And, and so Paul said, you see, uh, he appeared to me last. You see, for I am the least of them, because remember by the time he, uh, Jesus appeared to Paul, he had already gone on back to him. Mm -hmm. Paul said, for I am the least of the apostles, verse 9. And do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. See, he said, I, I, I persecuted the church. You know, I was against the church. I was against Jesus. I was against the teaching. I am the least of all apostles. I don't even deserve to be called a, an apostle. He said, but by the grace of God, verse 10, by the grace of God, I'm almost there, y'all. By the grace of God, I am what I am, an apostle. You know, I was a persecutor, you know, of the church. But by God's grace, I am who I am. I am what I am. I am an apostle of Jesus the Christ, you see, because they were criticizing him. In other words, he said, uh, you know what, I'm not worried about you because, uh, you know, he was putting it in a, you know, in a nice way. But, uh, but, but Jesus made me an apostle is basically what he said, you know, by his grace. See, see, yeah, uh, you know, I was made who I am by the grace of God. You don't see it. You don't believe it because you remember who I used to be. <laughs> and that's something how, how people can bring up who, who you used to be, you know. Uh -huh. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. His grace was very effective in Paul's life, he says. So, beloved, uh, now, here is the question. I, I went through all of that to say this, and, and I want to ask this question. It looks to me that Jesus appeared only to those who followed him. It looks to me that Jesus only appeared to the disciples. By that time, it was more, you just heard that there were 500 or uh, more. On the day of Pentecost, there were 120. By this time, there were over 500, probably more. Uh, but why did Jesus appear? Remember up in the, uh, the verse that we just talked about, 500, when you see brothers and sisters, anywhere in the scriptures where you see brothers and sisters, that's talking about followers of Christ. You know how we call each other brothers and sisters in church, you know, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so in the church, you know. Uh, the, when you see brothers and sisters, those are disciples of Christ, followers, followers of Christ. So 
So beloved, it looks like of all the people Jesus could have appeared to, he appeared to his disciples only. Those who followed them, followed him. Why did Jesus only appear to his disciples after the resurrection? I mean, wouldn't it have been nice for him to uh, go to the Pharisees? <laughs> the Sadducees? You know, those who were, uh, were against him. The Romans, the Roman soldiers and uh, appeared to Pilate and, and to, uh, you know, the church leaders who turned him over to be crucified. Wouldn't it have been nice maybe to uh, go and appear to them and say, mm, you thought you did something, didn't you? You know, uh, you know, I'm back. You know, uh, he, I, you, you, you had me killed, but uh, I, here I am before you. See, I told you who I am. You know, but no, he didn't waste his time with that, beloved. He didn't appear to them. Mm, some of you, you see, you see where I'm going. Uh, he, he went to his disciples. Are y'all still with me now? I know it took me a while to get where I'm going. It, it took me a little while here. Okay, I'm here now. He, he, he appeared to those who followed him when he was considered a nobody. He appeared to those who were with him before his glory. When he walked the earth, uh, Isaiah said they despised him. Uh-huh. Uh, they didn't even like to look at him. You see, one who was familiar with grief and pain, you know. Uh, 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 they talked about him and said, you know, who do you think you are? Isn't this the carpenter's son around the corner in the hood? Uh-huh, calling himself the son of God. Don't we know his parents? You know, even his family, even his mother and them, oh, they thought he was crazy. You know, uh, you know, and they said, well, you know what? Uh, we, we, you know, but Jesus, the ones who followed him when he walked this earth, when he was not even thought of as anybody, those are the ones he appeared to after the resurrection. Peter and over 500 of them, and even Paul, who was a latecomer, you know, who persecuted the church, but Paul turned his life around after having made contact with Jesus, after an encounter with Jesus. You can't come in contact with Christ and stay the same. You can come in contact with the church and stay the same. You can come in contact with Christianity and stay the same. But you cannot come in contact with Jesus and stay the same. Uh -huh. Oh, no, you can't, beloved. And so, uh, oh, why did Jesus appear to only the disciples? It was those who followed them when he was not even considered worthy of being called the Son of God. Those who believed in him prior to him receiving glory from God, those are the ones he wanted to appear to. Those who embraced him before. Beloved, you know how people are. You know people don't know you until you are winning the lottery or something. Everybody start calling you. Hey, this cousin so and so. <laughs> or you got a lawsuit and you won you 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 won your case and you got a lot of money. You know now everybody coming out of the woodworks. Where they coming from? Where you been all my life? You know, <clears throat> oh, I've been meaning to call you. I, I've been meaning to get in touch with. Oh, now they know you now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, beloved. You know, or, or when you get a title of some sort, or, or or you move up in the company, or you get a promotion, or or whatever promotion come from the Lord anyway. You see, and you move on up, beloved. Now everybody wants to be your friend. Um. You see, I'm so beloved, uh, uh, but, but, but Jesus uh, didn't appear to them. 
What am I saying? After Jesus rose from the dead, he did not bother with those who, who tried to hinder him when he was on the earth. After he rose from the dead, he didn't bother himself with them. He didn't even bother to go and show. I'm glad it wasn't because I'd have went, I'd have gone to the Pharisee first. Hey, y'all. <laughs> but no, Jesus didn't, 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 didn't bother himself with that. He moved on into his glory, walking in his purpose. Beloved, what do you do with church hurt? You move on like Jesus did. You don't worry about those who don't care anything about you, those who criticized you in the church, those who judged you in the church. You don't even worry about that. Jesus didn't even appear to them. He didn't bother with them. Now, beloved, there are some who love you. There are some who still love you, and I still love them. There are some. There are, there are many. Not everybody hates your guts. You know, there are some who still are, are lovers. Beloved always has, always will. And I embrace them as well. Beloved, I love them as well. You know, but there are some you ain't even got to give your attention to. Jesus didn't care nothing about going and showing himself to them. He went to those who he knew loved him and followed him. He wanted to show himself to his followers. Those who accepted him for who he was and who he is. Beloved, like Jesus, it's time for those of us who have been hurt in the church to move on and to go on about our lives, but don't leave God. Leave the church, but don't leave God. Uh, leave the traditional church. You come to an, an all-inclusive church. There is one somewhere in your area. The Lord has fixed it where you can go to an inclusive church somewhere near you. If you don't fit in the traditional church, if you've been rejected in the traditional church, if you don't feel you belong in the traditional church, there is an inclusive church somewhere near you. Find out where it is and go to church and embrace those who will accept you, who, who will approve of you, who care of you, about you, who affirm you, beloved. Uh, you ain't got to be bothered with the ones who never, uh, once they found out who you were, you see, and who you are, you know, then they changed towards you, but you've been the same person the whole time. Beloved, let me tell you something. There's some leaders in the church right now that I know they're gay. I know they're in, in the LGBTQ plus community because people they fool around with, I know. We are all in the same community, so we talk among ourselves, and I know them. But see, the folk in the church don't know them. They don't promote them to position. They don't even know who they are. If they knew who they were, beloved, they would have never appointed them. That's why they keep it a secret and, and stay in the closet. Closets are for clothes. Closets are for shoes. It's dark in the closet. I don't care what title you get. I don't care what position you get. Nobody belongs in the closet. I know some church leaders, beloved, right now today. I'm telling you, right here in Baton Rouge, some of them still here, some of them left town. Married. Well, you know, paint the picture. You know, they want to present to society what society wants to see. Got married, got kids and everything. Gay as I don't know what. Or bisexual or whatever they are. I'm telling you. I know them. I know people who know. And I know. See, they don't know. I know. There's some people I could tell some stuff about around here. But I don't do that. I don't say nothing. I don't talk about people's business. I don't say nothing. But they don't. They have no idea. They have not, they've been appointed by the by, by, by leaders of the whole district of, or district leaders. Been appointed to certain positions over certain, you know, uh, positions in, in, in the Congress of Christian Education and all these different uh, associations and things like that. They don't even know who they are.
and you not knowing it. That don't change me. I'm the same person. I'm the same person who baptized your children. I'm the same person who prayed for you every Sunday. I'm the same person who preached to you whenever I was asked to preach and sometimes spurred the moment. I'm the same person who taught Sunday school. I'm the same person who taught Bible study. I ain't changed. You just found out who I love. What difference does it make? Love is love. But it amazes me how when they find out who you love or what your gender affections are, how now you have become uh, uh, one of the worst. Like Paul said, the least of them. Mm -hmm. I told you I was going to get where I'm going. Isn't it something how when they find out who you love now, you are a uh, demon possessed. Uh, no, now you can't hold this position. No, now you can't do this. Now you can't do that. You know, uh huh. But it's not just the LGBT plus community. Women, don't you go to no church that don't let you preach if God called you to preach. You better come on out of there. I'm telling you. Don't let man hinder you. Don't you let man hinder you. You move on somewhere where you can preach. If, if you got to uh, uh, develop, uh, establish your own ministry, uh, 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 if God tells you to do that. But don't let nobody hinder you. There are some churches right now today that don't let women step foot in the pulpit and God called them to preach. Who do they think they are? I'm just, I, I, I'm just baffled by it. The audacity. Who do you know they think they are to tell you you can't do what God has called you to do because they don't like you? Woo, beloved. Y'all still with me here? Y'all with me? Uh, 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 uh. Hey, Cardis. That's my friend Cardis, y'all. Uh-huh. Chuck, y'all there? Uh-huh. I can't read it right now. I got to put my glasses on, but I do see your name there. Thank you. Look, y'all who are not, I can't see. Thank you for being here today. Look here. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, you know, he appeared to those who followed him, who accepted him for who he was and who he is. Jesus didn't even bother himself. Don't worry about him, beloved. Don't hold grudges. You know, don't stay angry. Now, sometimes anger is holy. Did you know there's a, a holy anger? A holy indignation. Jesus got angry. Jesus got angry about injustice. When he saw people being mistreated. When he saw discrimination and exclusion, excluding people, you know, uh -huh. not wanting to help people on the Sabbath day, uh, you know, for these church rules they had. Jesus didn't care anything about church rules. Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. Didn't matter to him whether it was a Sabbath day or not. He was helping somebody, you see. But don't be angry unless it's a holy anger. You see, you, you, you ain't going to do nothing unless you get angry about it. When Jesus went in there and overturned the tables of the money changers and flipped over the chairs and ran everybody out of there, that was a holy indignation because they were wrong. They were mistreating and stealing from people in the church. Jesus said, uh uh, this is my father's house. Uh uh. That ain't what this church is for. This is a house of prayer. See? And so, beloved, don't bother yourself with them. Jesus didn't bother himself about them. If you've got anger toward the church, let it be a healthy anger. Don't let it be an anger where you hating people. And you being, you know, mean to people and you become like them and end up hurting people, you know, uh, emotionally because you're angry and bitter. No, don't let it be that kind of anger. Beloved. Let it be a healthy anger, a holy anger. 
where you stand up for justice and stand up for what is right and speak truth to power and don't be afraid to do it. See, I don't care even if they are pastor or a leader in the church, stand up to them, speak truth. The truth is the truth and the truth is never wrong. Martin Luther King said it's always or, or the right time to do what is right. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You see, and, and so let it be a healthy anger, a holy anger. You know, don't be bitter and hold grudges. No, don't do that. Still love the ones who love you. You know, appear to those who, who want to see you, you know. There ain't nothing wrong with that's all right. See, but do not bother yourself with those who do not want to be bothered with you. Those who only tolerate you, you know. Ah, you don't need to worry yourself with them. Jesus did not appear to them. You see. Beloved, that's all I stopped by to tell you today. What do you do with church hurt? What do you do after church hurt? Turn it into a, a mission. Turn it into a ministry. That's what God told me to do. Don't be bitter and angry. Let your, let your anger, if it be anger, let it be a holy anger. And you stand up for what is right and speak against injustice even in the church. See, black folk amaze me sometimes. See, black folk want equality and justice for all. And, and they want to get rid of racism and, and discrimination and yet turn around against the LGBTQ plus community. Well, some of us are black. And how can you being black come against the LGBT community? How can you come against anybody being black, knowing what it feels like to be discriminated against? Knowing what it feels like to be hurt? Knowing what it feels like to be rejected. How can you of all people, black folk, come against the LGBT community? You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I know I I I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Uh-huh. But see, maybe when you decide to get it right and, and get your heart together, then maybe God will do something for, about this racism. This systemic racism and discrimination for all. Not just you. It don't work like that. Some people just want it to work like that, beloved. Some people want God to bless them and do what they want, you know, and give them what they, their blessing. You know, forget the LGBT. We don't want them. The LGBTQ plus community, leave them out. You know, even the black ones. You know, give us what we want, though, you know. Like God finds some kind of favor in you over the LGBTQ plus community. Are you crazy? That ain't the God we serve. That's not the God we serve. See? So, beloved, let your anger be a holy anger, a healthy anger. Get up and do something. Do something. God sent me to the LGBTQ plus community. And all are included here. All inclusive. All are welcome and affirm here. Sit me with my holy anger. Yeah. Some people say you don't, you're not supposed to be angry. That ain't true. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't get angry. You ain't going to do nothing. You got to become an agitator. <laughs> you got to agitate some folks. If you don't agitate people, they're not going to do that. I'm not going at all into all that, beloved. But uh, what do you do after church hurt? Ask the Lord what God wants you to do. Ask the Lord what your next move is. And only be with those who want to be with you. Only hang around those who accept you for who you are. Go to church, but go to an inclusive church. Go to a church that includes you and accepts you for who you are. 
See, we like to go where they got the, you know, the big choirs and, you know, and, and the musicians, you know, and, and, and where they got, you know, they got this ministry and that auxiliary and all this kind of stuff, and auxiliary, uh, and, you know, uh, all these different programs. We want to go somewhere big, big old building. Uh, you don't need all of that. And our inclusive churches are growing, by the way. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. As long as the God is there and the word is there, don't worry about small beginnings. I said beginning because if there's a beginning, that means that there's a future. There's a future in our inclusive ministries. There's a future in our, uh, in our uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, affirming and welcoming ministries. There's a, there, there, there's a future in our inclusive churches. Don't worry about the small beginning. Do not despise the day of small beginning. You got to start somewhere. Jesus' church only started with 12. 12 members. The original 12 disciples and that was it. What do you do after church hurt? Move forward. Stay in church. Associate yourself with those who are like you, who 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 and who follow you. If, 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 I don't mean you know like you in every way. Your same color, your same style, your same talk like you. I don't mean that. I mean those who 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 want to follow you, and those who want to accept you, those who 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 hold on to you. And not just those who want you when you become somebody in the society. See, after you win the lottery or something, you know. Excuse my light, you know. My light flickers up there for some reason. I don't know why. I don't switch the light bulb. I don't know what's going on with that. So I had to get that checked. But, uh, beloved, uh, so, so what do you do with the church hurt? You turn it into a mission. Turn it into a ministry. A ministry is not always church. It could be a ministry of justice. It could be a ministry of, for, 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 for our youth who are on the street doing nothing. These are the ones committing crimes. Doing nothing. Not in school. Not working. You know, not doing anything. These are the ones. Make your mission count. You make your anger work something. Don't just sit and brew in it. You know, don't just sit and do nothing. Do something. Amen? That's what you do after church hurt. Don't bother yourself. You don't run behind them. They don't want you. Don't run behind them. Go on. Move. Go on. Move on. You see, there's some stories I can tell you Jesus did. You know, when he before the crucifixion, it take too long. But he didn't bother himself with people that didn't want to be bothered. They told him to leave this city, leave this town. He got his boat and he left. You see, those that only tolerate you or, 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 or you know, who don't really want to be bothered with you, don't waste your time. Go where you're going to be counted where you are going to be uh, uh, valued and affirmed. Amen. When we open our doors at First Liberty Church, I want to see your face in the place. Don't leave church. Don't leave the inclusive church. God is, God is sending you back to church. That's why he, he has all these uh, inclusive churches now. That didn't just happen. That didn't happen by, by, by coincidence. That's not just happenstance. That didn't happen for nothing. All things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to God's purpose. We don't have these inclusive churches for nothing. They are for you. For you, beloved. Those who have been hurt in the church, those who have been rejected, we are here for you. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Let me see here before we close. And uh, look, you just remember that. 
But Adam said, he went, he appeared to those who would spread the word. He is the great I am. Proof was given. He went to those who would spread the gospel about him. That's right. The truth about him. That's the gospel. That's the word. Amen. Chuck said, I came from the Baptist background as well. Yeah, Chuck. Cardiz, I see you. Yeah, amen, she said. Amen. God bless y'all. Listen, and those of you who I cannot see uh, on here, God bless you. Thank you, Vanetta, if you're still with us. Those of you who I cannot see, welcome always. Amen. You're welcome, welcome. And, and you are welcome when we open our doors. You come right on in. You know, I don't care who you are. You come on in. You know, bring your family, bring everybody. And so, beloved, uh, uh, you know, don't be bitter. You know, don't let your anger get the best of you. You make it a holy anger and turn it into a ministry of some sort. Amen. God bless you. Don't be bothered with the ones that don't want to be bothered with you. Uh-huh. Amen. So, beloved, listen here. Before we close, if you have not met this Jesus, Jesus who still teaches us today, if you have not met this Jesus, the Jesus of equality and justice for all, you know, the Jesus who accepts and affirms the LGBTQ plus community, if you have not yet met this Jesus, he is waiting for you with open arms. Come unto me, all who are burdened and weary, those of you who are tired, heavy laden. He said, come to me and I'll give you rest. And so come on, beloved, to Jesus. I read something once that said, many people have gone to Christianity and failed, but no one has ever come to Jesus and failed. That's powerful to me. That's powerful to me. And so, beloved, come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus right now. And give your life to the Lord. The one who gave his life for you. The one who died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That Jesus is calling you to an inclusive church. Amen. God bless you, beloved. And God keep you is our prayer. Uh, know that you are loved here. Amen. I will see you Sunday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time, uh, over on YouTube. Uh, there will be a notification on our Facebook page. You just click on the picture, and it will bring you right into our live uh, Sunday service at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday morning. Amen. So I hope to see you there. LGBTQ plus community, black, brown people, Asian, uh, Ukrainian, wherever you're from, whoever you are, welcome, welcome, welcome. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, family, families, all of you, God bless you, uh, and, and God keep you is our so we will see you Sunday at 11 o'clock. Love you. Don't worry about the folk that don't worry about you. Amen. See you next time.